Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today's guests are Chris Bowman and Danny Lundquist, and they're co-owners over at The Chicken Coop Company. Chris, Danny, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. All right, guys. So we got a lot to talk about here today. So the chicken coop, chicken coops for backyards and urban settings, man, I did not know this trend or this, this phenomenon was taking place until meeting you guys and getting to know a little bit more about the business. I'm thrilled to bring this to my audience. I think it's an amazing story. But just to get us kicked off and to get us started, we'll start this episode as we start them all with what we like to call our Mission Matters Minute. So Chris, Danny, at Mission Matters, our aim, our goal is to amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts to get their message out there. That's our mission. What mission matters to you? I'll tackle this one. So Adam, our mission is to give every family, regardless of where they live, access to safe, secure, and good-looking coops for their flocks. But really, Adam, at the heart of it, our mission, I'd say, is to inspire people to take chances. So whether it be to help people take their first step towards sustainability and owning their own food supply, which is pretty cool with chickens, or for Chris and I both coming from the corporate hustle, our sphere of influence is littered with people who want to chase an entrepreneurial dream, but think it's either out of reach or too risky. So with this business, if our success can simply encourage people and enable them to take chances, whether it be to get chickens in their backyard or even to take a chance on their next business opportunity and chase that dream. I mean, really, that's that's a win for us and what keeps us going. Amazing. L love bringing mission based entrepreneurs on the show to share why they do what they do, how they're doing it, really what we can all learn from that. So we grow together. So, of course, I, I want to get into the company. We'll, we're going to do that and especially get into the product. But before we do. I like what you mentioned about just the that being an entrepreneur or that other hustle or just the entrepreneurial journey. Like, where, where'd that start for you two? Like, with being an entrepreneur, even that concept, like everybody's got their own journey. Where'd it start for you? Well, Chris, let me actually, because it starts with you, Chris, let me start and then, <laughs> and then you can, we can go from go ahead and hear your story. Sounds but really, good. Chris and I have been friends for a long time yeah. and both in the corporate grind. Meanwhile, he had his side hustles that were always super inspiring to me. Yeah, like, man, how can I get into that business? And he's had a number of businesses that he's started and sold and gone mm -hmm. through. And so for me, it was seeing his lifestyle and seeing how he does things and dreaming and talking about ways we can do life. And that really got me fired up. So when I was seeing yeah. the end of my corporate world or like my dreams were getting so large, I'm like, all right, now's the time to leave. Mm -hmm. Chris, let's go. Like, how, do, how can we get something done? So <laughs> Really, that's where it started for me. My parents, they said had their own business as well. So I come from that that world. But Chris has been a major influence in my life. When you were a kid, did you have anything? Was there a small hustle? Like the, the kid hustle? I'm curious. Oh, I mean, working in my parents' factory yeah. when I was you know, four, you know, child laborer, right? But <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I was working in the shop. I don't know if I was supposed to be. Chris, what about you, man? How, how'd you, before, before we get into how you suck Danny into this endeavor, like we're... <laughs> <laughs> Talk about some of those previous experiences. Well, I think it all starts with child labor, to be honest. So my dad was a contractor, and so he would suck mm. me into whatever project he thought I needed to do to learn how to work. So yeah. we lived on a huge hill, and so we had a lot of retaining walls that were that concrete block. Mm. And if you think about a con concrete block, you can set it up, you know, mortar it in, and it's hollow on the inside. Yeah. Right? Well, somebody had to fill that block. So guess who? Yeah. Cement mixer. Wow. Hand -pulling, hand -pulling. How old were you roughly? Roughly. Oh boy. 13. 14. Yeah, that's a good age. That's uh, a that's a good age. Still got the scar of when I stuck my hand in the cement mixer accidentally, those grinding wheels on the side <laughs> when I tried to catch it from falling off a wall one time, and that did not go well. Wow. But yeah, I learned I, how to work. I learned how to pound nails, and I learned mm -hmm. that wasn't what I wanted to do when I grew up. Mm. So I got started, you know, right out of college. I went to work for Wells Fargo. And I kind of took the entrepreneurial spirit into corporate America. So yeah. it was a bit of a black sheep. But while I was there, I ended up starting a company called Simply Nutrients because every good company starts with a problem. Mm -hmm. we'll talk about the problem in chicken land in a second. But I started Simply Nutrients because I ran into a family member that had anorexia and they mm -hmm. needed some nutritional supplements to, to get healthy again. 
So yeah. we said, hey, who else is needing this? this is back in 2009. Mm -hmm. And this was on the professional supplement side of the world, not just your, you know, nature's made at Costco or what have you. Yeah. So we got into that business and I started it while I was in corporate America. And that was kind of my first big, and it wasn't big at the time, mm -hmm. side hustle, entrepreneurial business, you know, let's start something. So I've done that in real estate, did that with Simply Nutrients. And then I finally got out of corporate America because I got a bad boss. And mm -hmm. a few years after that, you know, Danny had said, hey, you know, I'd love to start a business. You know, what, what do you got? And so a lot of things come across my desk and mm -hmm. This one just came across my desk and I thought nothing of it, mm. nothing. but I sent him the email and said, Hey, you know, you want to get into the, want to get into the poultry game? Here you go. Yeah. And I shot it over and he said, well, this looks kind of interesting. And yeah. here we are with you. What, what stuck out about that? And either you can take this, like what stuck out about that opportunity? Like a lot of different things you could have done a lot of different, like what was attractive about the poultry game? I can take well, that Chris. Go for it. If you don't mind. Yeah. So. I, I had gotten chickens about a year before me and my wife and man, they become like pets. You know, my really? wife's up there every morning, like, Hey girls, like she's talking to her hens all the time. The kids <laughs> are out there playing with them. And so I realized like, man, these things are part of your family. Mm. And at that time also egg prices were through the roof. Obviously our economy and our country and everything is going through stuff. And I feel like, you know, when things get tough, people buckle down and kind of focus on home mm -hmm. and, chickens are an amazing opportunity to one, just control just a tiny bit of your food source, you know, mm -hmm. where your food comes from. So there's a level yeah. of sustainability. Mm -hmm. You all know the homesteading thing is taken off like crazy. We all have the dreams of moving to acreage and doing that whole life. And it's taking over Instagram and all these things. And so there's this personal experience with chickens growing mm -hmm. up and then seeing how my wife loved them and how when we got chickens in our neighborhood, which shouldn't have chickens, we got them, our neighbors got them, and then we moved to a new neighborhood, and then my other neighbors got them, and you see this kind of, wow, evolve, you know, things are evolving, and so that's taking off, and normally it's a little taboo to have chickens mm -hmm. in the city, so the little header here of backyard, you know, coops for backyards in urban and suburban settings, it's kind of taboo to have, you know, clucking hens in your backyard, yeah. and that's changing, because we honestly have neighbors mm -hmm. that walk by, and every single morning on their walk, they will see if the hens and the girls are out and they talk <laughs> to them. It's crazy. So long story short, I see how people get become obsessed with them. They're really fun to have around. They're great for kids. Mm. And it was egg prices were through the roof. So we hopped on and bought a great company from, you know, two great brothers who are mm. phenomenal guys and they built a good foundation and we took the helm and it's been, it's been great. Yeah. And Chris, from your end, like what, what stuck out as the, as the business opportunity when you're evaluating deals, evaluating other things, like what, what stuck out to you? Well, I think, you know, what stuck out to me really was the barrier to entry. Mm. You know, you can do so much in business, yeah. but if everybody else can do it or it was really easy, it wouldn't, number one, it wouldn't be fulfilling. And number two, it probably wouldn't be a great business. So yeah. if you've read the book, you know, Blue Oceans, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say chicken coop is a blue ocean per se, but I think what we're really trying to reinvent is the category of kind of that Goldilocks play of you're not going to your local farm store and getting a piece of garbage. You're not spending 10 grand, but you're able to get sustainability that looks great at a fair price mm -hmm. and is supported by, you know, folks like ourselves and our team who will treat you as family. And so to me mm -hmm. that the opportunity to, do that in kind of an international setting was fantastic. Yeah. Talk to me about like the, the trend overall, like in the United States, like you mentioned that, that it's showing up, popping up in more and more neighborhoods and like some of this, like the, the taboo aspect of being in the city with it is kind of changing. Like, like, how do you see this trend going? Like, what are you seeing from day to day? You know, that's actually a really hard statistic to get. The poultry category is so large because it includes all your meat birds and different things for you know mm -hmm. who's buying chickens and how many chickens humans are consuming so it's mm -hmm. actually really hard to find that number but there are statistics and some studies that show substantial growth year over mm -hmm. year over year i don't know the number right offhand. yeah um, all we have is our anecdotal evidence of our inbox <laughs> and our phones <laughs> that are running ringing and the upper trajectory of the amount of people that are looking for chickens and that are on our website every single day is incredible. I mean, mm. we have search volume that I'm shocked at. 
of people mm-hmm. who are who are looking for coops. So, mm-hmm. and something we've learned too about the sales cycle is people will look for quite a while. So they'll mm-hmm. they'll have an interest, and I think it takes that you know confidence to hey, I'm going to raise a living creature in my backyard that I know nothing about. <laughs> yeah. Raptors that do they smell? There's all these barriers to entry, so they do their research, and so we find that people will come back four or five, six times before they actually purchase. So mm-hmm. they're doing their due diligence. They're talking with friends. And so that's just kind of creating this one, the searchability of the topics mm-hmm. online. And then, yeah, just the the overall research that people are doing and having to talk to people. So it's growing for sure. Yeah. And and talk a little bit about, about the education piece of like what it actually, like, how do I know? Like, how do I know if I qualify, if I'm able to, like for the novice out there that's like just starting out on that path of thinking of if it makes sense, like, what does it look like? What goes into that decision? The cool thing about this is that it's a huge community feel. Mm. So we're not going to be everything chicken to people and we don't have to be. There mm. are so many resources out there and like, We talked to a guy not too long ago. He's just fired up about one area of the chicken business. And so Mm -hmm. he satisfies that area. And so it's where you can collaborate. You can, there's no shortage of research and information. (laughs) Even if you go to your social sites and you join these communities, I'd say that's a great place to start because you can ask questions and it's not always just thought leaders that are out there pumping all the information. Mm -hmm. It's all the chicken owners out there. So Mm -hmm. it's huge communities. I'd say it's really the jumping in. Isn't that hard. You just have to put your toe in and you're going to have all the support you need. Mm. Give me some of the basics. Like how much space would I need? Like, how does that work? Good question. I don't, I wouldn't recommend having less than two chickens. So Mm -hmm. having enough space for two chickens and they don't need much at all. Mm. I don't know if a balcony in LA would work. If that, (laughs) (laughs) Maybe, but my mom's in Florida. I don't know. We could, I I could maybe it might put my coop in Florida. I don't know. We got a backyard out there. Like, what do I need? (laughs) For sure. A lot of, I mean, I think our second most sell, selling state is in Florida. Mm. So a lot of people in Florida are buying coops, but I'm not even joking about your, your apartment in LA. Yeah. They don't need a lot of space. And if they get some fresh air and you give them a place to roam, which, you know, you can give them all the supplements and things they need to be successful. Yeah. If you have two chickens, like you could actually have a really fun experience. Wow. And there, and I think you also mentioned in our, in our warm up that you, that you got, that there's been schools ordering and that there's other, like, there's even been like kind of some of that B2B function. Like what, what does that look for? Like, why would, why would schools or other organizations get interested in this? So, Hey, I mean, I think they're interested in it for the same thing we started talking about really the child labor piece. And I don't mean to say schools are using <laughs> child labor, for like, I'm in. In the bus. <laughs> but I think, you know, and I have this, in my own family, it's mm. tough to find opportunities for my kids to learn how to work Mm. there's only so many chores in the house i don't i'm not a contractor i can't have them go pound nails or pour concrete really learn how to work and so i think schools and we'll talk about families in general are looking for opportunities to educate kids hands Mm. on how do i take care of an animal you know what is that responsibility like what is it like doing these chores and i think it gives both schools and families an opportunity to say hey this is a contained, safe environment where I can teach my kids not only how to work, what responsibility looks like, mm-hmm. feeding yeah. a living thing, having that emotional attachment, but also from an entrepreneurial perspective, especially for families, you know, selling eggs to your neighbors. Yeah. Going and having money change hands for product that really puts an imprint on kids. Yeah. And, you know, gives them a desire to say, hey, I did this in my backyard. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do with my life yeah. when it comes to, you know, when it comes to that? I think that's really exciting. And it's a, I think a fantastic way to not only, you know, get food, be natural, be sustainable, but also, you know, teach life skills in a fun way. And then, and then you look forward, you know, 20 or so years after Chris, and then when some they're being interviewed and they're like, my dad, and it's like, we're talking about our dads and our parents. They're like, what was, and somebody asked them, what was your first hustle? My dad had these chicken coops and I would go door to door selling them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love it. That's a great story. And they might say it on your show in <laughs> yeah. five or 10 years here. 
<laughs> oh, that's amazing. I do, I do actually want to go a little bit further into all kidding aside into, into the, the child aspect and just like the concept of entrepreneurship. Cause there's a lot, there's a lot of people that are, that'll watch this and there, and obviously we make light and it's fun. Right. But like, they're looking at ways to support their kids and maybe entrepreneurial endeavors, but maybe they weren't entrepreneurs. They don't exactly know how to support. So I think this is interesting. I think it's interesting. What have, what have you found? Like what, what kind of things have you done to maybe support that interest in, in kids or otherwise? Like what, what have you found? Yeah. And I'll let Danny jump in here too. I mean, I think what we try to do is make it really easy because as mm. a parent, I've got four kids, I'm already overwhelmed. And yeah. so anything extra seems like sometimes a mountain. And so mm -hmm. what we've tried to do is make it really easy. And we're in the process of developing some content around this too, to make it even easier. Mm. But just by saying, Hey, your chickens are not going to die. Here's a great home. Here's the accessories you need. Wow. You know, here's kind of everything you need in a checklist to be successful. Mm -hmm. You know, then we're working on some content for parents to say, Hey, don't be afraid of your neighbors. Your neighbors are going to love your chickens, right? Yeah. But they're only going to do it if you get them involved and make them love them. Mm -hmm. But also I'd say, you know, your neighbors hopefully like your kids. And so yeah. you're kind of a, a bigger family and it's great to have that interaction and have those kids go up to them and say, Hey, you know, would you like some eggs? Yeah. They're having to make that sales pitch. It's not just guaranteed, right? <laughs> you know, might say no thanks, but making it easy to do and then helping parents and just giving them the ideas of here's how to facilitate some of the process mm -hmm. around starting your kid's business. You mm -hmm. know, where do you keep the money? How do you do all these things? I think helps be successful and kind of takes it from, you know, a mountain into something consumable and doable. Mm -hmm. Danny, that's anything you want to add? No, that's good. That's good. I mean, there's a lot of kids knocking on doors asking to shovel snow or mow lawns. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot asking for it you know, selling eggs. And yeah, I think it's cool. I, I like it. Let's dream for a minute here, guys. So we're, you know, we're all entrepreneurs. I'm an entrepreneur. You're both entrepreneurs. Like what's your vision for this? Like what's the vision for the company and what do you guys see going for? Let's bring out that crystal ball. Like let's dream. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. You can take this so many directions. It's actually setting that mile, those milestones mm -hmm. is, not that hard in the near future, but as you go out, it can get so far out because we're in that homesteading space. You know, yeah. we have, you know, 30,000 plus eyeballs on your website every month. You can go a lot of different directions. And you can provide value. So Chris and I being, you know, we've, we've now run the business for a while. We're learning about our customer base mm -hmm. and we're learning, all right, who are our customers? What else are they interested in? Mm -hmm. Like what else do they need a advisor in or how can we enable them? We've talked about how we can get a, a chicken coop in every backyard or enable them, you know, enable them to actually know where to find it and how to, how to do it. Yeah. And there's a lot of other questions that they're asking and other things they need to mm -hmm. help their family grow and help their family develop and teach their kids the skills and life lessons they need. So really mm -hmm. we could take this all sorts of directions. Chickens are kind of just the start in my opinion. Yeah. What about yeah. you, Chris? You want to chime in on that one? Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, there's so many directions. And so I think, you know, we're, we're thinking about things like, you know, kind of some horizontal integration, if you will, could call it vertical too, but in this case, probably more horizontal. And the fact that, you know, gardening is a big piece, hmm. you know, greenhouses. So not just homes for chicken homes for, you know, other things that promote sustainability. Yeah. Um, you know, we would love to have a chicken coop in every backyard or every other backyard. Mm -hmm. So how do we get in front of those people? and do that is really what we're thinking about. And, mm -hmm. you know, there are so many ways. And again, there's so many ways this can go. We're, we're moving into the accessories again, trying to make yeah. it easier for people instead of having to go to 15 places. How do we put kind of best of breed stuff and make it really easy to consume? Mm. So honestly, it, it just kind of blows your mind yeah. and you got to step back and just take it one, you know, one thing at a time, but it's a, it's so exciting and it's so motivating. I have to peel myself away from the keyboard. Mm. Either of you, whoever wants to take this, take uh, one of the things that as I looked at your website and otherwise, and I was doing my research for this, I think it's interesting how easy you make it. Like I want, I want you to, to have for ownership, to get started, like all of that. Walk me through for those that haven't visited your website yet and are listening to this. And by the way, for everybody listening, we'll put the website in the show notes, all that other good stuff. So you'll be able to just click on the links and head right on over. But that being said, walk me through kind of like the user journey, 
like of what it looks like to purchase one, to set up, to, to get going? Like walk, take us from like beginning to end on that so people can understand. Totally. Uh, Chris, I'll, I'll cover like the first half of the journey. And if you want to cover the second half, I'll pass it over to you. But first half, it's market research. You're mm -hmm. looking for, if you want chickens, let's say you made that decision. Yeah. Um, where, how do you find a coop and how do you buy a coop online? Like that's mm -hmm. the first thing we have to talk through with our customers, or at least when we build our website, how do you, how do you portray that it's safe and you can trust us and we have a quality product. I mean, it's a big piece of outdoor furniture, if you will, right? It's yeah. these things come in three big boxes that you assemble and we've made that a really easy process, but mm -hmm. they still have to trust that it's quality and that they have to trust that it's going to make it there and that it's the right size. So mm -hmm. communicating that and educating your customer base on it's safe to buy these things online. And that mm -hmm. really opens up the world, whether they buy our coops or not, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Like they can buy other people's coops. There's coops for everybody out there. Mm -hmm. Wood ones, plastic ones, huge ones, mansions, small one, itty bitty, mm -hmm. cheap, whatever. There's a coop for everybody and that's great, but they have to know how to search for it and what mm -hmm. they want. And it used to be, we'd have to go to, you know, your tractor supply or your local feed store or something. Where do you find a coop that you can buy? Yeah. The fact that it's available online now opens up your options, just like shopping, you know, the shopping experience for every other product. Mm -hmm. it's, it's great to go online and know this is the size of t-shirt I need. And there's a million of them I can choose from. So yeah. coops, I guess the first step would be just how do you build the trust that, Hey, you can, you can buy a coop from us and you're going to have a great experience and you're going to love it. Mm. Um, and then it's how to set it up how to get things going, what happens, what's the post purchase experience look like mm -hmm. with, all right, I've got these big boxes. What do I do with them? Mm -hmm. So really it's just enabling them with good content, good instruction, and then raising your chicks. And that's where things get really fun. Yeah. So let me jump in there too, and just say, you know, I think, you know, Danny nailed the front half of that. The other piece in making it easy is how do I know what I need? And so we're actually going to launch a new website version here. I'll tease it in the next month, I hope, that when you're buying a coop, right below that on the right-hand side, you'll mm. see some options that are selectable for your coop, meaning mm. there's climate options. So if you live in a cold climate, you can select your climate options. So just like, you know, mm. in a car, you would want heated seats, right? Yeah. In your chicken coop, you might want a heated chicken coop, or you need a roof to keep the snow out, or mm. panels around the outside of your chicken coop to keep the snow out. You know, you need a water and a feeder. So we've made that stuff really easy to basically just like a car, you know, you're picking the right mm -hmm. size tires, you're picking the right size water or the right size climate options for your coop mm -hmm. and making it really easy to just add what you need, nothing mm -hmm. you don't and check out and have it come to your door. Yeah. Do you find that most people that order these are able to put them together themselves or do they have to hire outside help? Is there a variation? Like how long does this take? Like typically, and I know there's different models and things. So maybe if you could just speak to it in general. Yeah, Pro I would guess 95% of our customers, 99 put it together themselves. Mm. Family project or just by themselves. And usually it takes about two to three hours. Some people yeah. take marks, they paint it and do different things, but it's pretty quick. Yeah, that's awesome. So it's simple. It's simple. Like it sounds to me like the like a, a big part of the buying decision is in the beginning to like research what you want, the type, everything else, make sure it's going to fit your space. But then after you make the decision, you order it. Delivery time. How long does it normally take to arrive? Things like that. Man, it sounds like you're trying to buy a coupe right now, Adam. Man, I'm like, I gotta, I got a little balcony here. I gotta, I gotta do what I gotta start at, at stage one to research now. I'm in the beginning. You know Come on, it's, man. No, those are, it's so fun because <laughs> the, the initial question of, you know, how do you bring somebody through the process of buying the questions yeah. you're asking are exactly the questions people go through in their mind, mm -hmm. right? What's it going to cost me? One that we've missed is, is it going to look good? Because, man, there are oh. a lot of ugly coops out there. And partly it's, you know, when you think about a coop, you think about, oh, this is some barnyard structure. And most of the, you know, best-selling coops out there are these big, ugly barnyard structures. Mm. It's like, I live in a beautiful home in suburbia land. Like, I don't want a big barn back there. I want something that's pretty classic that's going to look good with my home. Yeah. Something I can paint, something customizable. So mm -hmm. that's where a lot of people start is, is it going to look good? And so they search for the picture that looks the best. Yeah. And then they go from there. But to answer your question, it's usually like, does it look good? How much does it cost? How many mm. chickens do I want? How long does it take for it to get to me? You know, yeah. is this thing going to take two months? 
So we ship it within 24 hours and it arrives usually within three to five days on average. Oh, wow. So it's fast. So it's fast. So if somebody's watching this, they want a coop, man, they have one by the weekend. It's, it's Tuesday when we're recording this. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we were go to Florida, yeah. Florida by Friday, Adam. <laughs> oh, man. Come on. <laughs> my mom is, I don't think my mom's watching this, but who knows? She's going to get a text like, Adam, we're getting chickens. Right. <laughs> so good. <laughs> it's sustainability mom it's okay <laughs> let's go mom i'm here for you oh man well well danny chris i mean this is this has been a lot of fun i knew it would be an exciting topic i'm i'm just i'm thrilled to continue to watch this and the whole homestead movement all the things that you're mentioning and i just see so many themes here that regardless of business are like prevalent like who's our customer understanding them more how can we serve them better like just so many truisms and then and then adding that component and that layer of also financial and entrepreneurial education and responsibility for kids i mean the same way you do with the dog right feeding a dog and just all these like flexibilities and then to see the community building around this i just think it's an amazing story that being said if somebody's watching or listening to this and they want to follow up they want to start their their research, they want to start their coop expedition, I'm going to call it. How do they connect with you guys? How do they connect with your team? Great question. Best place is chickencoopcompany.com. Pretty easy to remember. Yeah. Or you can just reach out to us directly. My wife answers the emails. I answer the phone. So you can reach us at family at chickencoopcompany.com. Yeah. That's Amazing. probably the best place to reach us. Yep. Perfect. And for everybody listening and watching this again, we're going to put those links in the, in the show notes so you can just click on them and head right on over. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters or engaging in an episode, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, executives, having them share their mission, their vision, their businesses, you know, why they do what they do. So hopefully this can inspire and help you along the way on your journey as well. If that sounds interesting or good to you, hit that subscribe button or that follow button wherever you're watching or listening to this too, because this is a daily show. That means each and every day we're putting out new content, bringing you new entrepreneurs, bringing you new stories, and we don't want you to miss a thing. So again, hit that subscribe button. And Chris, Danny, man, so much fun, guys. I can't wait to continue to watch this business thrive. So again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks. Thank Adam. you. That was awesome.